Hello, this is Sunfounder. Today, I'll guide you through assembling the Pyramin 5. All you need to do is follow the steps to assemble and test. Before assembly, it is necessary to update the Raspberry Pi's bootloader and install the system on the NVMe SSD. First, update the Raspberry Pi's bootloader by writing the bootloader to a micro SD card. Next, visit the software page on the Raspberry Pi official website and download the Raspberry Pi imager. Once downloaded and installed, launch the tool. In the imager, select Raspberry Pi 5. On the Operating System tab, scroll down and select Misc Utility Images. Select Bootloader Pi 5 Family and then NVMe USB Boot. Then choose the micro SD card you inserted earlier from the list. Click Next and Yes to start the writing process. Once the writing is complete, safely remove the SD card. Insert the micro SD card into the Raspberry Pi to monitor the bootloader update process. Connect a display to your Raspberry Pi. Then power up your Raspberry Pi. A green screen indicates a successful bootloader update. Now let's write the system to your NVMe SSD. Insert the NVMe SSD into the SSD adapter Then connect the adapter to your computer. Open the Raspberry Pi imager. Choose Raspberry Pi 5. Select the recommended OS and then choose your inserted NVMe SSD from the list. It's wise to configure your username, password, Wi-Fi settings and locale now. Also, enable SSH to allow remote access. After saving, click the Yes button to start writing. Once writing is complete, remove the NVMe SSD card. Let's continue assembling the Pyramin 5. Start by unboxing and laying out all the components inside. Here we have the structural parts, the main board, and various accessories. To facilitate transport, some parts are bundled together. Let's separate them first and name them Plate 8 and Plate B. First, on Plate A. Secure to M2.5 by 8 standoffs with M2.5 by 4 screws. Next, attach to M2.5 by 6 standoffs. Finally, secure to M2.5 by 5 standoffs in place. Now, insert the micros extender into the card slot on the back of the Raspberry Pi. Then connect the Raspberry Pi 5 to the USB HDMI adapter. Insert a 1220 battery into the USB HDMI adapter, positive side plus facing up. Then plug in a 4-pin header. And plug in a 2-pin wire. Lift the brown clip of the connector, insert the FPC cable, and press down a few times to ensure a secure connection. Secure the connected boards to plate B with four M2.5 standoffs and two M2.5 screws. Remove the thin nut from the power button, thread its wires through the side hole, then reattach the nut to secure it. Place three thermal pads in their respective positions. Take out the tar cooler, position it correctly, and press down on the spring screws to secure it. Finally, plug the fan cable into the fan connector on the Raspberry Pi 5. Secure the power switch converter to the Raspberry Pi 5 with M.5 for screws. You can now connect the power button's wires. Take the NVMe pip out of the box and prepare your NVMe SSD. 
First, screw the SSD stud into the NVMe pit. Insert the NVMe SSD and then secure it with the SSD screw. Insert the FPC cable into the NVMe pit. Then secure it with M.5 for screws. And an R2048 rivet. Take out the fan and dust filter from the box, making sure the fan's power cable is within the slot. Place the dust filter to the back of the fan. Then secure the fan inside plate B using for M3, 5 screws. Install another fan using the same method. Take the acrylic plate E. Remove the protective paper. Secure acrylic plate E on I.O. expander with 2R3090 rivet. Flip the I.O. expander, lift the brown tab. Insert the OLED FPC with the black tab up and press to secure. Plug the two fan cables into the I.O. expander. Red wire into the positive pin and black wire into the negative pin. You can now plug the I.O. expander into the 40-pin header on the Raspberry Pi 5. Now place plate 8 and plate B together, ensuring all the Raspberry Pi interfaces come out through the holes. Peel off the protective film from the back of the OLED screen and stick it on. Secure plate 8 and plate B together with M.5 for screws. Remember to peel off the protective film from the OLED screen. Peel the protective film from acrylic plate C and acrylic plate D and secure them to the sides of the Pyramin 5 with M.5 for screws. If some holes are misaligned, you can push the metal parts by hand to align the holes. Insert the light pipe into the hole on plate 8. Finally, stick the EVA foam pad to the bottom of the case to complete the assembly of the Pyramin 5. Insert a Type-C power source, recommended 5 volts, 5A, to power the Pyramin 5. Next, we'll configure the software to ensure all modules function smoothly. Open our online tutorial at pyramin5.rtfd.io and go to the form, setting up your Raspberry Pi page. If you don't have a display, you can access the Raspberry Pi remotely, for example with Windows. Search for PowerShell in Windows search bar. Right-click on Windows PowerShell and select Run as Administrator. Enter ping for host name to confirm the connection is stable. Now you can log into the Raspberry Pi via SSH username at hostname, local or SSH username at IP address. The first time you log in, a security message will appear. Enter yes to continue. Enter the password you previously set. Note that the password characters won't be displayed on the screen. Now you are remotely logged into the Raspberry Pi. Then navigate to the file. Set up Pyramin 5. First, edit the EPROM configuration file to prevent the OLED screen and RGB fan from staying active after shutdown. Set power off on halt equals 1 in the file. And then press Ctrl plus X, Y and enter to save the change. Now copy these four commands to install the Pyronman 5 module.
Wait a while for the installation to complete. After rebooting the Raspberry Pi, you'll see Raspberry Pi related information on the OLED display and the Pyramin 5 will light up blue. The video is over. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe us to get the latest or visit www.sunfounder.com to see more information about the product.